welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much for watching, considering I've had this huge delay since my last video. I apologize for the delay. What happened was, because I really should have recorded and launched this video last week, that was the plan. I had two videos planned for last week and I wasn't able to do them because I was at home sick with the flu. I had this awful flu, this kind of ear, nose, throat, head, and then it went into my chest, um, fever, what else? Just everything, everything you can think of, aches and pains in strange places and all of that fun stuff. So I really want to take a moment to thank my wonderful clients. There were three of you, I think, who I had to delay. And there was one in particular who I kept delaying, um, a lovely lady in the United States. Thank you so much to my clients for being so understanding, for being so caring, for telling me to rest, for telling me not to worry, for just being so amazing. And this is why I love doing this work. You know, I've made this change to be doing this work. By the way, there's a little fruit fly and I have to sort these guys out because the thing is they keep growing and I know I should be Buddhist and I know I should put them out the window. I was kind of doing that for a little while. I managed to do that with, um, with lady beetles. <laughs> I get a huge number of lady beetles. Uh, like, like every time it just starts to become autumn, there are all these lady beetles that come in. I managed to get most of them out the window. But you see this fruit fly thing, I'm telling you, I'm sorry, but this might happen during this video. So back to me being sick and back to my wonderful clients. Um, you guys are amazing and it's, it's why I love doing this work. And you know, now that I've switched to doing this kind of work, I mean, the corporate world is so unforgiving and so it, it's really unnatural and bad for us. Like because of last week and because I work from home and because I do this style of work and I do the astrology and I do what I do now, I was able to get over my illness last week entirely drug free. I basically um, ate really healthy food. I had a lot of um, lemon and ginger. Uh, I did a lot of good Ayurvedic type things. So we're going to talk about that um, in the notes. I, I've got a series of notes for the month's overview. So as usual, I'm going to do an overview this month. We're going to touch on a few high level things and then I'm going to do your little mini readings. So you can just click on your mini reading if that's the only bit you want to listen to. But if you want to stick around for this intro, please do stick around because I will be talking about health in this uh, overview because it's December and not only was I sick, um, some of my clients were sick and uh, have been sick over the last, say, few weeks, uh, over the last two months or so. I've had clients who have been sick as well and so that's why I really want to talk about health as an important subject um, and I've found a couple of things that I want to share with you. Uh, who else has been sick? Well, friends of mine have been sick. Um, and the other thing that's been happening is that a lot of people are getting recurring sicknesses so that they'll have one illness and then they, it just keeps lingering on and on. And that's something really important that, um, you know, I thought I could devote a bit of time to. But how about I go through my introductory notes and then I will get into the little mini readings. So, I'm pretty sure I've covered off apology and thank you. Yes, and there's a fruit fly and oh, wait, sorry. I'm not, I'll let that one live. That's bad. You've already seen me kill two fruit flies. I am so tempted to turn this off and start again, but I think you need to see the real me. So I kill fruit flies. That's, that, that's something. I, I probably, I will be reincarnated as a fruit fly. I just know it. Um, yeah. In my notes, I've got the first point here, which is hoping everyone's okay in California. Yes, my God, what is going on there? That is unusual. I haven't had time to look up astrologically what's going on there. Um, from my understanding and from what I've been hearing on the news and the various news sources, so I'll tune into the headlines on mainstream media but there are a couple of alternate news sources that I look at. 
I get the feeling that um, this, I'm tempted to get it. I didn't get it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real problem. I don't, I don't know why. I, I have like, I've Google searched it. Um, I have no idea why I have this many fruit flies. It's kind of, and they're distracting as well. I can see it right there. The fires, yeah. I listen to alternate news sources and I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what on earth is going on there. I, I, so I didn't look it up astrologically. Um, it, it didn't happen, but it might. I might, if I'm able to devote some time to that and, and to look into it, I, I would do. I find it hard with things like countries. When you plug in a country chart, I always, I'm always a little bit mm, exactly what moment is this? What moment in history? And you know things like that. So, uh, mind you, the states for the chart for the states is interesting because the United States has entered Rahu Mahadasha, and this is a very Rahu kind of time that America's going through, and the current. President uh, Donald Trump, you know, he's got a, quite a strong Rahu chart, Rahu in the 10th, I'm pretty sure. So, mm, interesting. Another piece of amazing news that came up um, that I was super excited about. I'm so excited about this. This is like, this was like a day this year that happened that I felt this genuine excitement for all of humanity. And I, I hope. You guys find it exciting, as exciting as I do. Uh, the note is Mariana Williamson running for 2020. I was blown away. I saw this thing on my dashboard, an important message from Marianne Williamson, and I'm like, hmm, okay. I click on it, and there she is saying that she's going to run for president. I was so happy. And do you know what? I think it's a big long shot, and I'm not entirely, hang on, I'm just going to make sure that I'm recording the sound. Yes, I am. Um, I'm not entirely sure that things are going to arrange themselves so that she could actually be the president, but I'm telling you, that made me so excited. It made me so happy. It made me see that I think we have come to a turning point. I think we as a collective consciousness have really risen, all of us together. And, you know, we've got things like the veganism movement, we've got um, these young, wonderful millennials, honestly, who are just bright, beautiful, sensitive souls who are coming up, who are, you know, so wonderful. And this news of Marianne Williamson running for 2020, it really just made me think we've turned a corner and I, got, I feel like we're out of the woods. I know 2016, just the whole year, I felt pretty awful and I was doing um, Vedic astrology at that time professionally. I was running a different channel, actually. I started this one, I think, in Feb, but I was running a different channel before, a kind of practice channel, and uh, which is no longer in existence. But um, that whole time kind of really gave me the, uh, the encouragement to, to, to keep doing this professionally. And, um, yeah, I know 2016 was a tough year. I used to follow all the predictions, all the monthlies. I, you know, was doing this work. I um, was following all kinds of different people. And, yeah, I was worried at that time, 2016. What's going to happen to all of us? But now I'm just like, I feel like we're, at, we're turned a corner, we're out of the woods. If she runs or gets a chance or gets in it doesn't matter just the fact that it's happening made me so happy and that's the kind of future we have to look forward to if you watch my Uranus video that's ex these are the long-range predictions I was making there that we're going to have people like her in charge and we're going to have um, it, it'll be very different so I looked at her chart and I'm pretty sure I've got her chart I'm tempted to open it, but also I, I, I don't want to talk too long because I've got so many notes here. So I think I might save it for another day. Uh, but it was looking good. It was looking quite good. It was looking good for 2020. It was even looking possible for 2024. But I felt like after that, I'm kind of like, hmm, not quite seeing it. Uh, but, you know, hey, it, it's, it's good news nonetheless. So I was so excited by that. And I've started watching her weekly talks. It was really good because then I got to find her weekly talks and I've read a good chunk of the Course in Miracles. I'm going to go back to Course in Miracles and keep reading that. 
uh, a bit each day. So that was amazing news. I was really happy to hear that. I've been following the Brexit thing just a tiny bit. Um, just today, as I was going through all the monthly uh, reports, I thought, oh, why don't we have a look what's going on there? I feel like with Brexit, I think um, if things can delay until Feb of next year, that's going to be better. I feel like movement that happens now, it, I don't know. It's It feels like if they can just delay, 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 the energies are much better in Feb to be doing any kind of negotiation, especially setting up trade deals and things like that, because you'll have Mars in Aries, which I think is better, and you'll have um, the Sun in Aquarius, which I think is a lot better. And I didn't look up a UK chart. This is just kind of generic what's going on in the sky, you know, the planets in the signs, very generic. So, but from what I saw as I was going through the monthlies doing that analysis, I thought, yeah, that there will be better chance of getting something suitable that everybody's happy with then. So fingers crossed they delay and they be sensible and they don't try to use their free will to push or rush anything now. I don't feel like these next two months um, are going to hold much beneficial energy for that sort of activity. This month, the key things that we're going to look at in your little monthly overview is we're going to look at Mars and Sun um, because they're making some interesting movements uh, this time. So that's what I felt. I had a look and, uh, you know, I think it was all looking okay, but uh, the sun is going to be one to watch. And especially here in the United Kingdom where we're not getting much sunlight. We're not getting much sunshine. It's very cloudy. It's dark quickly. So, for example, right now it's 10 minutes to 5. Um, it started getting dark at 4.30, so, which is great to do the videos. It's great for me. But uh, because in the summertime I have to wait till about 9, 9 o'clock to get some darkness. So... Um, so yeah, and I just tend to think this room looks a bit better when it's dark, but uh, maybe next year we will be doing videos when it's bright in here. Let's see. Uh, who knows? Um, and that was the other thing I wanted to mention, that next year I might go to Australia. So this year for Christmas, I'm just going to be here. My mum asked me, do you want to come home? And I'm like, uh, no, I quite like it. I quite like being on my own in the cold weather here, <laughs> which probably sounds a bit weird, but I just, I love it here. I love, I love going for a really long walk by myself in the freezing cold up to the woods and just like, and it's really quiet and nice. Like Christmas here is actually really nice. Um, whereas where I grew up in Australia, you know, we'll probably have a picnic on a crowded beach or something and that's fun too. But I quite like the contrast of this and um, yeah. So next year I might go to Australia sort of I'm kind of tentatively thinking August, September. And if I do, you guys are all coming with me. We are going to have so much fun. I will make so many videos. I think it'll be a really good, fun thing to do. So next year I might be doing, yes, I might be doing sort of more daytime videos. Um, I have to work out the schedule and the routine. What's happening for me in my chart personally, you know, because every week I think to myself, yeah, I'll do two videos and then I don't do any videos. It's terrible. So what's going on? Well, in my chart, I am actually, you know, I'm going to have a Saturn Mahadasha begin. I think I've mentioned this one time before. I never talk about my chart. I never talk about my sign. People always ask me, what sign are you? I never say because I'm every sign, you know, 16 Varga charts, I, I'm a bit of everything. So I never associate with one sign or one nakshatra or one anything, but I am stepping into Saturn Mahadasha. So, you know, I do wear dark blue quite a bit and I sit here in the nighttime and this is a lot of Saturnian stuff going on. But uh, yeah, I think I feel like because of the Mahadasha changeover, I'm unable to establish a really proper routine. But I feel like I feel like once I've got a year of satin under my belt, man, I'm going to have some kind of very steady routine going on. I hope. Like that's what I want as well. So so fingers crossed that I'm able to do that. But let's get back into my notes here. Um, I knew I was going to digress because I just feel like I have, haven't spoken to you for ages and I want to catch up and um, say what's going on. So, so yeah, so Mars and Sun this month, these are the interesting planets sun as i say in the united kingdom we're not getting much sun 
that's why I got distracted because I was talking about sunlight in this room. Um, I've got a note here, you know, it's going to be important to be mindful of the sun this month, especially for us up here in the northern hemisphere. I think in the southern hemisphere it's going to be pretty easy for you guys, but it's going to be hard for us here. So if you're living in the northern hemisphere, we've got to be mindful of the sun. Um, I've got a note here, do sun salutations, yoga. Do your yoga in the morning, do a couple of sun salutations, nothing major. You know, Deepak Chopra, apparently he does like two sun salutations every day and that's his exercise. And that's what I try to aim for. I try to aim for small amounts of exercise frequently. So I don't say to myself, okay, I've got to do half an hour each day. No, no, no. If I can manage like two or three of something, that's an achievement. So, you know, try a, try a sun salutation now and then. Um, I've got a note here, eat spicy food to, to remain connected with the sun. Now that is an interesting point. When I was studying, um, I'm pretty sure it's in the Graha Sutras by Ernst Wilhelm, he talks about the different foods that apply to the different planets and spicy foods came under the sun. And I thought to myself, oh, no wonder the favorite dish of the United Kingdom is curry. You ask any English person, what do they love? You ask Kate Middleton, you ask, you know, all the posh English people, they love, their favorite dish is curry. They love curry and a glass of wine, glass of beer, something like that. Now, what's the deal with the curry? What's the deal with the spices? They are literally eating the sun, right? Because they are so sun deprived and they love the sun here. Brits love the sun. They miss it. They talk about it. They ask me all the time, what are you doing in this country? They're like, you're from Australia. What are you doing here? People are amazed that I want to be here, you know, it's, it's incredible. So, so yeah, if you want some more sunlight in your life, eat more spicy foods. Isn't that incredible? Um, now let's take a look at some key dates that I had a look at for this month. What have we got going on in our sky? So new moon Scorpio, 7 December, and that's 7.20 a.m. UK time. Uh, so that's new moon Scorpio. That's nice. 7th December. So that's quite nice. I really feel like all the action astrologically is really happening towards the end of the month. So it, and that's what I focused on in the little monthly overviews I'm going to do. So full moon Gemini, that's beautiful. 22nd December, 5.50 PM UK time. So that is interesting because full moon Gemini around Christmas time. And what will we all be doing at Christmas? We're all going to be chatting with our families, being with our families, traveling to our families, um, short distance travels to our families, you know, um, spending time with family. And me, I'm going to be Skyping my family. So it's going to be a very mercurial experience with them as it often is um, sometimes here. I've had all kinds of Christmases here where I've been with people, I've been on my own, sometimes I've flown back to Australia so I've had all kinds of different Christmases but I really do quite like the Skype the family thing and then go for a big long walk in the uh, out in the great outdoors there somewhere so that's definitely what I'll be doing. Uh, 21st of December for the solstice Yes, we have a solstice coming up, so that's one to look forward to. Here it will be, um, pretty sure I've got it right this time. Don't worry, I'll put a note up on the screen if I get it wrong. But it's going to be the shortest day. And I wanted to get into health, guys. So now this is the part that I'm really excited to talk about because, and I hope the camera doesn't drop out anytime how long have I been yeah it's going to drop out soon so I'll try to be quick with this um, but if the camera drops out the camera drops out so our health is so important I really wanted to do just a little spiel about health and this recent sickness that I've come through and how nice it was and in many ways you know how how good it was to be able to just be at home and not worry not have to feel guilty or call a boss or say oh you know I can't come in and because what I've always done most of my life is I'll just pop some pills and I'll go back to work you know two days off and then you pop some pills and you carry on and I tell you it's not natural and it's not the way forward we need to change our workplaces we need to change our lives so that if we are sick we can just be sick in a healthy way and not pop pills and 
it, that's so much better for our physical bodies. If, if you can do it that way, I do recommend it. Believe me, I understand the need to just take medication and keep going. And that was what I wanted to share, just a personal example of how my whole life I grew up um, basically taking antibiotics for colds and flus and viruses and all this kind of thing. And that, the reason for that was because when I was a little kid, um, I had quite a severe flu one time. My left lung collapsed. I was in hospital for an extended period of time. And, you know, ever since then, I was on um, frequently on antibiotics and I was on regular medication in order to help me breathe, basically. And I knew when I was coming up to about 20 years of age, my whole teenage years, I was on just daily medication just in, a, in order to be able to breathe and, and carry on. And I knew I'm going to have to wean myself off this if I'm to travel. And I knew I wanted to travel. I knew I wanted to do something like this, come to the United Kingdom. And uh, I actually wanted to go to the States. I wanted to go to California and work in Silicon Valley. That was when I was um, still in technology, but, uh, you know, that never played out. Um, I ended up coming here, which has been wonderful. I would have loved it either way, I think. Um, but, you know, I, I just knew that long haul travel is, and, and me immigrating was going to be a part of my life. And when I've studied my chart now, and it, yes, it's definitely, it's definitely in there. Oh, I see. One of these bugs is just, uh, apologies. Brace yourself. There might be another fruit fly. But I mean, I knew that I had to wean myself off medication in order to um, be able to travel and do the things I wanted to do in life. And I did. I did that. I did it through willpower. I got off medication by running every day and doing um, these small arm weights. I did that every single day and I was just very determined and I used my will to really get off and wean myself off those medications. But the real healing happened some years later. So when I was 24, I moved here to the United Kingdom. I remember in the first few months, um, I was getting most of the bugs here because they were all new to me. And I ended up getting a really severe asthma attack. And I ended up in hospital again. And I had the mask and the medication that I really needed. And then the cab driver drove me back to my little studio. I was living in North London at the time. Drove me, I was renting up there. He drove me to my studio. He dropped me at the bottom of a hill and he said he didn't know how to get to that particular street, which he should have known because it's a street that's hundreds of years old. He should really know where that place is, but he didn't. He dropped me at the bottom of the street and he said, look, I mean, I could drive you around for another hour. And I'm like, no, 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 just drop me here. I know how to get back. I'm at the bottom of this hill, I'm looking up and I'm going, wow, I've just been to hospital. I've just had this like medication to help me breathe and now I have to walk up a hill? And I did. And anyway, I remember getting home and it was something about that walk and it was something about getting home and, and thinking about what is this concept of home. And I remember having a very, like time slowed down and I remember having a very profound thought and the camera's probably going to cut out any moment now, but I'll keep carrying on. I'll have to, anyway, it's time slowed down and I had a really profound thought. And the thought was, I still haven't moved out of home. And I thought, and the thought, the main thought was that this studio where I'm living is just an extension of my childhood home in Sydney, Australia. And since having that realisation, I've never had an asthma attack since. And I've never needed that medication since. Hi everyone, I knew the camera was going to cut out and it did. At the 24 minute mark it tends to do that. I think it's a feature of the Canon G7X Mark II. Uh, that's what all the vloggers use though so I will continue to use it. Plus I have no, well I do have another camera but this is the one. This is the one I need to use. Um, now I basically I think I got to the place where I shared the thought that I had and the thought was I haven't moved out of home and just the deep awareness it was like an awareness that cut through 
everybody, so the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body, the spiritual body, every, like all of me was in total alignment and awareness and understanding of the fact that I haven't moved it out of home yet. You see, and I had moved out of home. <laughs> like I was in a new country, I had a studio, I you know, I was gonna move out um to the other side of town, but you know, uh Jupiter had other ideas for me. And this is something Ernst Wilhelm talks about when he explains that the planets they seize you. Graha it means seize. They pick you up and they seize you and they put you somewhere they seize you or they make you fall in love or they make you do things you know and the planets definitely seized me and I think it was definitely Jupiter who kind of picked me up from Sydney and put me here but it's like all of me needed to join and all of me needed to be present and I think perhaps psychically and emotionally and spiritually quite a lot of me was still back home um, it's really interesting by the way apologies for the honking outside I don't know if you can if, you, if that's being picked up um, so yeah I mean all of us you know our, our mental physical mental spiritual emotional bodies everything needs to be aligned everything needs to be in one place and it's really interesting the thought was mostly I haven't moved out of home yet you think that's a negative sort of a thought but it's like the deep realization of that then moved all of me out of home and to where I was to be in the here and now, if you know what I mean. And these deep, and what I've got in my notes here is to talk about health. And I wanted to share that story with you to, to show the distinction between willpower and the willpower that I used to wean myself off those medications. It did a pretty good job, but the deep, true healing happened in the form of awareness and that is the thing that Eckhart Tolle is spending his whole life teaching and if you read The Power of Now and if you read A New Earth you will discover all the tools and techniques to start really cultivating a very deep awareness of your own life and what's going on. He's quite good um, there are loads of other people and, and perhaps over the coming videos, you know, I'll try and share as much of all the things I know as I can. Part of this health thing, I <laughs> am going to share with you um, a link to Dr. Gabor Mate. He's got some wonderful things to say. Um, and I think the video is titled When the Body Says No. I watched that while I was ill and that was outstanding. And he describes... Um, you know, when you're an asthmatic, the the medications that you're taking. And I, I, after watching that, I kind of realized, wow, so my whole first 20 years, I was basically taking adrenaline and cortisol, just straight up, you know, like, wow. And no wonder I was addicted. And, um, you know, no wonder I had to had to wean myself off that stuff. And, and it's really interesting because the illness that I've just gone through um, again, I'm kind of going through another bout of, okay, I don't want to take antibiotics. And, I, and I'm so glad that I did that illness drug-free. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm definitely not sharing all of this to try and inspire or encourage or suggest to any one of you that you should do your illnesses without medication. No, 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 not at all. Uh, but I'm sharing this to say, as an example, to say that it can be done and that it takes a lot of time. And I did a reading, an audio reading for someone just recently, and I'd mentioned this thing about shifting the baseline, and I've got it written up here on my on my notes. That is something I want to talk about, and that might be another video, actually, because I'm realizing I've still got a few things to talk about here. So I think that's going to be another video, but this shifting the baseline concept, that is something that... Um, you know, I think I am consistently kind of doing in that, you know, there was there was a shift of, okay, let's get off the daily drugs. So that's shifting the baseline up a bit. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, now let's clean up the diet. 
done that little shifting the baseline all right we'll clean up the diet okay let's um, bring back in the exercise because I dropped off shifting the baseline again you know and 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 now it's kind of I keep shifting up a little bit in increments and one of the shifts that happened for me was um, transitioning out of full-time work into being a contractor. So that was a shifting the baseline. Then, then you know, that work started to go part-time. Okay, that's shifting the baseline again, giving me more time to spend on my health. You know, and now it's like the work is very part-time. It's just three days a month and I do this all the time, and uh, except for when I'm sick, <laughs> and, um, and which shouldn't be often. Uh, and it won't be often because here's the next note. I've got to come back to my notes, otherwise I will talk for days. Um, keep, do you keep getting recurring colds? Okay, here's something that I found recently. Um, I'm going to share a link. So I've, I'm going to share the link of Dr. Gabor Mate. Go below and have a look at what he has to say. So if you're into this kind of mind-body link and, and you want to look into that kind of thing for yourself. The other place to look at is Louise Hay. Um, Louise Hay, so after, some months after I had that profound realization that I haven't moved out of home, I read her book and she talked about the fact that um, a lot of people who have childhood asthma, these are people who, um, well, Dr. Gabor Mate talks about the stress uh, that's coming from the family home, but she talks about the fact that when children leave their family home, when they move out of home, that's when the asthma goes away. And it's really interesting, isn't it, that I had physically moved out of home, but I hadn't energetically moved out of home. And so, yeah, so when all of me finally moved out of home, she's right, the asthma definitely went away. If you look up her book, you will see the mental symptoms that are creating every single illness. There's a wonderful guide at the back of the book, and you'll be able to look up everything. And even like things like, oh, I'm having a you know, I had a cut on my finger or um, I stubbed my toe or, uh, you know, I have a problem in my knee or, or it could be an illness. It could be, you know, a chronic illness or something like that. It could be anything. It's a pretty amazing book. So definitely check out Louise Hay for all that. Uh, I've looked up her book loads for so many different things. and It's fascinating. The reason, the mental reasoning that she says is behind every illness isn't always the case. So, Use your own awareness, use your own discernment as you go through that. You know, we need a, a strong third chakra as we go through all of this work because we need discernment. We need to know, okay, what information is for me and what information is not for me. And not all information is going to be for you, okay? So that's another important thing as well. Do you keep getting recurring colds? Perhaps your lymph nodes need clearing. And recently I watch all kinds of different vloggers and one of the people I watch, her name is Trini. She used to um, do this fashion TV show or something years and years and years ago and now she does a vlog and she talks a lot about cosmetics and fashion and all that kind of thing but I quite like this episode she's with a guy called Shabir and he's in her bathroom it's kind of quirky and how she always invites guests into her bathroom but um basically they're talking about this thing called dry scrubbing which you can do at home and I actually recently bought one of these things so I saw this video like whenever it was launched I think on Monday or a week ago whenever and um and they have this dry brush and you buy this dry brush and it comes with a stick and mine has a stick on there as well. And like, so I actually bought it and you're supposed to like scrub or something. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to watch the video and I'm going to learn how to do this because apparently you scrub to, to your heart or something and it clears all the toxins. I don't know. I'm going to investigate. So, but I just thought I would share that since that's something that came to me and I figure I'm going to try and use this channel to share as much good stuff as I can and I think that's a good thing so for those of you who stick with me in these intros and you know I want to give you something so um, oh my gosh and now the, the final thing on my notes that I definitely want to give you is a link to um, to a client of mine who is just an amazing man, Adam Baldwin. He is fantastic. And I'm actually just going to bring up his website now so that I've got it in front of me as well. AdamBaldwinMeditation.com. Yeah, this is the man. This is the man you want to see. If you're wanting to get a meditation practice going, uh, I 
have studied meditation with Deborah King in the United States and she gave me a seed sound and she initiated me and, and I also did Kriya Yoga in Australia that was a long time ago so I started with Kriya Yoga and I was initiated by Guru and everything that was all proper and I think it was a three-day thing and then I did one at a cinema in Monterey in um, the United States with Deborah King and I've done loads of I've gone to so many meditation things this that everything and uh, recently one of my clients Adam Baldwin he he came in and we had a session and it was so fantastic and I've just had a look at his website. He's got this new website and I actually said, would it be okay? I have only a very small audience, but would it be okay if I share with my beautiful audience? And he said, yeah, do that. And um, basically this guy is a world-class meditation teacher and I know I have a lot of um, international people watching, especially interestingly states, India, Australia. These are my big audiences, but if you're watching from somewhere else, hello. And um, in fact, feel free to share where you might be watching from if it's somewhere different. Um, but yeah, get in touch with Adam if you are looking to establish or re-establish a meditation practice. And I know for me personally, I have gone in and out of meditation. So that there will be like, I remember when I was at, um, working at HSBC, I think for like nine months, I did it every single day and I never gave it up. And I was up at six every day and I was doing my 20 minutes in the morning and then I'd go to work and I had a really good routine down for about nine months. And for me, it's kind of like, I'll do it for a good long stretch and then I'll taper off and then I'll come back to it. So sometimes I'm re-establishing my routine. Um, but if you're new to meditation and it's something you want to incorporate, or say, for example, you're re-establishing a routine, you're experienced, um, whatever it is, definitely get in touch with Adam and do check out his website and see what he's all about. And I mean, the clients that I work with, I just want to say you guys are all amazing like you inspire me do you know what I mean and, and like from all walks of life too it's like I've met so many fascinating people and I just want to keep doing this because I love doing this work and it is so enjoyable and so much fun so I think that's my really super duper uber long intro for this month which is normally a lot longer than normal isn't it so it's because I've missed you guys, it's because I was sick, it's because I haven't recorded for ages and I felt like I had a lot to say. And I definitely wanted to share some stuff about health because this is the cold and flu season. This is the time when we are all going to need to pay some more attention to health. Also, it's Christmas parties and, you know, we're going to have to learn to say no to some stuff. Definitely go out, definitely have a glass of whatever you like, but just don't go overboard. Um you know, be healthy, look up your, do you know what's inspirational? Look up your Ayurvedic dosha and see what kind of things, and I've actually printed, I'm going to, I'm going to print off a list of the things I should be eating and I'm going to keep it in my wallet. So how Saturnian is that? Um, because I definitely want to stick to my uh, good Ayurvedic habits as well. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get off coffee again. So there's another one that I, I go on for some months and then I detox for some months. So I'm up and down on that coffee circuit as well. So I'm trying to detox for a little while. Let's see how it goes. Right, so I think I'm going to get into the um, monthlies now. Uh, just I might just sort out a little fruit fly here. Apologies. That's the third one. I'm so sorry you have to witness all this killing oh I feel so bad I really do feel bad there's a book um, by a neurosurgeon uh, Dr. Eben Alexander oh god there's another one that's four I've got it's like a stampede um, there's a book by a guy called Dr. Ale Eben Alexander neurosurgeon who had a near-death experience fascinating he talks about being an earthworm ever since that book I have felt I really I genuinely do feel bad for but I mean, it can't be a good life living in this apartment, you know? Like, where do they get food? The kitchen is all the way over there. Anyway, Aries Moon, <laughs> welcome. Welcome, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to talk about your month of December. We're going to have a look at, um, basically, we're going to look at the Sun and we're going to look at Mars this month. These are the two 
quite interesting energies that are going to make some significant shifts. And the, the action is really mid-month to towards the end of the month. That's where it's all at. So we're having a look at the 16th of December. The sun will join Saturn in Sagittarius in your ninth house. Okay, so is this a good thing? What does this mean for you? It means, do you know, I'm really, yeah, you're going to have to watch your health with this placement. So, and I mean, look at this, it's, it's December, we're winding down anyway. So this is a really good time to just wind it down and um, go home early if you can. Uh, wrap up your work a bit sooner. Don't push yourself. Don't work too hard. With Sun joining Saturn in, in Sagittarius in the ninth house, we've got the Father and the Sun together. Hmm, I've got Saturn here too, you know. So this can be a wonderful thing and this can be a really good time for you to, to, to get under the skin of something, to analyze something perhaps, to really go deep and understand something. So I've got a note here, channel any unsettling energies into finding the truth, thinking more, going deep. Um, use your analytical powers and you can use your mind to figure things out. Right? Don't be afraid to use the intellect. Don't be afraid to use structure and logic and all these wonderful things. Um, be careful at work. Be careful about power struggles, that kind of thing. And that is a classic, you know. Um, sometimes I've seen men with sun in the ninth house and things like that. And it's like, yeah, power struggles with dad, definitely. And we've got Saturn here as well. So it's, it's interesting. Um, 23rd December, we've got Mars moving into Pisces in your 12th house. Okay, so what do we got here? Um, this looks like it'll be a good time to go easy on spending. Hard to do, right? Hopefully you've bought all your Christmas presents already. Um, it's also a really good time to just take care, just take a bit of extra care with your relationships uh, this month, especially around that festive season, around the holiday time. Be careful how you speak to your family members. I always think when, you know, be careful how you speak to them. I always think, well, maybe, maybe just don't speak. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever works, right? Um, it's a great time to pursue spirituality. Yeah. And I've got a note here that if there's something unusual that you want to try, now is a good time. So if there was some, you think, oh, I heard about this Pleiadian channeler or something, or there's something just really different that you want to try that you've never tried. Maybe it's maybe it's getting an Ayurvedic con consultation. Maybe it's, um, you know, there are wonderful artisans with the body who look at your eyes and tell you what kind of food you need to eat, you know, that kind of thing. It's, this is the time to be experimental and try something new. Treat yourself, you know. Uh, Mars is a bit of a restless seeker in the 12th house, yeah. And, and I know that Mars, people with Mars in the 12th, they... Um, they very restlessly seek all different uh, types of spiritual avenues. So Aries Moon, this is a good overview for you. Okay, this, uh, my summation is that it's a good time. Just chill out and uh, just enjoy some time with your family over the holidays. So I wish you well, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to meet Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to have a look at two planets this month. Um, these are the two planets that are making the most interesting moves, I believe. Uh, there are other things going on in the sky, but I'm focusing in on these two. So on the 16th of December, we've got the sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius in your eighth house. And okay, so now this is a bit of a contrast, actually, because Mars is doing some interesting stuff. Mars is having a good transit. So there's a contrast here, and I want you to, to just... Check in with yourself this month and see how you feel, okay? At every turn, just kind of go, do I have the energy? Don't I have the energy? Now, you might not have the energy, okay? So with the sun in the eighth house, it might be a time that you need to take care and rest, okay? Maybe you need to decline some uh, opportunities or parties or things that are coming up or last-minute work projects. I know how it can be, you know, when I worked in agency land and, and there were always 10 million things to do. Um, in the lead up to the holidays so um, if you need to decline some things do that in order for you to be able to rest um, some of yeah relationships with family might be a bit tough um, or strained uh, at this time but again 
your Taurus moon. I know you're going to be fine. Um, Taurus moon is very stable when it comes to family. You'll be okay. Um, unnecessary expenses, sure, yeah, Christmas time. There are always unnecessary expenses at this time, so beware of those. Uh, but we've got a great transit here. So this is where there's some contrast here and it's really going to be for you to discern, check in, tune in with yourself. You know, what should I do? So here's where the great energy is. It's Mars. Mars is the great energy here. Mars is going to be in your 11th house. So 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces in your 11th house. So, and I think he's going to be there for quite a while. So this is a terrific transit, great transit, great energy for creativity, right? So if you want to, if you want to start a business, if you want to start a side business, if you want to do something with this energy, start a project, you know, because you think about it, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, after then, the new year will begin and you'll have this energy. You'll be starting with this. This is fantastic. It's a great time um, to spend with your children, to enjoy with your kids. Um, you should be experiencing better health and more energy because of Mars. Okay, so if the sun is tiring you out because maybe you've got quite strong sun in your chart, um, then be mindful and do take rest. But if you've got a good Mars, enjoy, right? Go out, have fun, be with the kids, enjoy your health, enjoy being with the family, you know, uh, and keep working, keep keep chipping away or, or starting up your side business or your moonlighting gig or whatever it is that you like, you know, because there are more income opportunities with this Mars energy and it's really good for you to be out and about. So it could be a social time. Um, that said, in the Northern Hemisphere, it is cold. You might want to just rest. So you've, you've really got to check in Taurus Moon and, and see how you feel. But if the energy is there, use it and love it and enjoy it. So I wish you well, Taurus Moon. Uh, I wish you a great festive season wherever you are. And we are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon. Welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now today we're really just going to look at two planets. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in the sky, there's always a lot going on in the sky, but when I clicked through the entire month of December I felt like these two were the most interesting, were making kind of the most interesting shifts and so I'm just really going to focus in on these two. A lot of the activity is happening towards the end of the month so that's really what I'm I'm looking at here. So 16 December, Sun joins Saturn in Sagittarius in your seventh house. Um, and this could be a little bit challenging. So all up for you actually, even with the Mars energy, it's a bit challenging. So well, what have we got with Mars? So 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces in your 10th house. And on both sides, I've got a note that health, please rest, you know, really look after your health. Did you hear that? It's my little neighbor. I don't know if you heard that. I heard that. Um, I have some, the, the neighbors have very noisy kids. They're very cute, but they're very noisy as well. Um, so now health. I've got a note. Health, please rest. Um, please, you know, take time out if you need time out. Uh, this is a really good time to recharge. Christmas time, the holidays, you know, um, don't take on any extra work either. If you can cut down the work, that would be a really good thing to do. Um, as in, apologies, Gemini Moon, it just got cut. So I think I probably covered most of it though, which was Sun and Mars. So we've got Sun, 16 December, joins Saturn in Sagittarius in the seventh house. 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces in the 10th house. I think I covered most of the fact that you're going to have to rest and you're going to have to chill out if um, you're finding things get stressful, if there's too much going on, you may need to decline work, extra work piling up on your plate or um, going out a lot. Perhaps you'll be invited to lots of parties or something. So just be selective during this time. Uh, not a great time to travel apparently, but of course if you have to travel due to... Um, you know, meeting family, absolutely. It, it's kind of work travel, non-essential travel. Um, 
I've got a note here, stay strong, burn through, just keep going, make it to the holiday period, you can do it. So it could be a bit of tough going for you. Um, watch your spending and when it comes to your workplace, how things are career-wise, don't push anything, now's not a time to rush, now's not a time to pro propose anything new or try anything new. Just get to the end of this year, recharge your batteries and enjoy. And now you've also got full moon. Gemini moon, you got a full moon happening on the 22nd. So there's going to be a big culmination in life, some end of some big cycle. So that's a really exciting thing to look out for. So um, rest, rest, allow the culmination to happen and try to get some time, some proper recharge time. You really do need it. So I wish you well, Gemini moon. And we're now going to welcome Cancer moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And we're going to have a look at Sun and Mars today. So I know there's a lot going on in the sky. There's always a lot going on in the sky, but I really want to focus in on these two energies the most um, because they're making interesting shifts and that's happening towards the end of the month. So we've got 16 December, Sun joins Saturn in Sagittarius in your sixth house. And we've got 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces in your ninth house. So... It's interesting, you've got a contrast going on here because on the one hand, you've got the sun giving you great energy. Um, so you, it's a really good transit from the point of view of the sun. You'll have good energy, good health, good stamina, good time to travel. Uh, you know, when it comes to networking, earnings might go up, more clients, that kind of thing. Great way to finish off the year with that beautiful sun energy. Of course, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you may not see the sun. So that's why in the introduction, if you watch the introduction, you'll see there I suggested things like do the sun salutation or eat spicy foods because spicy foods are actually connected with the sun. So there are ways to get sun energy during this time. Um, if for example, like me, you're not able to fly off to Spain or somewhere beautiful, uh, you know, um, that's okay. You can make up for it at home. So, um, so you've got good sun energy, but it's your Mars that's posing, uh, it's not fantastic. So uh, 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces and ninth house. So here, what I guess I want to say mainly is just look after your health rest, relax, recharge. Any moment you have or any chance you have to kind of get some alone time or you know if you're in a hectic family situation over Christmas and I've heard people they offer to walk the dog or you know they, they find some ways to, to get away from it all and, and to recharge so you might be a person who needs to do that uh, over this festive time. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not the most ideal time for work either. And that's good because we've got a holiday coming. We're not supposed to be working our socks off right now anyway. So, you know, uh, take it easy. Take it easy. And I'm sure others around you will be pretty understanding about that. Because honestly, most signs are in need of some kind of rest and looking after the health. So that's why this month I've really focused the whole month on health. Um Great time to have a holiday and a good time to watch your spending as well. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're going to take a look at two planets. In particular, we're going to have a look at Sun and Mars. Now these, I had a look at the whole month, had a look at all the planets, and I thought these two were making the most interesting shifts. Um, on the 16th of December, Sun joins Saturn in Sagittarius in your fifth house. And this is not the best transit in the world. Um, there could be some challenges to do with your work, um, challenges with authority. There could be some stress as well associated with this. Um, I've got a note here that you, what you can do, there is an opportunity here though, you can work with Saturnian energy, which has been in this spot for a while now. Um, you can work with this Saturnian energy to restructure your goals and how you feel, how you think and feel about work from a broader perspective. Maybe you want to start restructuring things in your work life. Maybe you want to, to make some big changes there that might take time. Okay, so you might be planning some of that right now. Um, so that's something to think about there. 
on the 23rd of December you've got Mars moving into Pisces in your eighth house so this is quite nice actually believe it or not uh, we, we might not think Mars in the eighth would be great but you know time off with your family and friends should be good okay so as long as just don't um, Hold, oh, I want to say hold back aggression, but I mean, you know, that's a tricky thing. It's like when you're uh, when you're with someone and in the heat of the moment. I mean, yeah, be careful is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't want to say to you hold back your aggression because that's I can't say that. But but what I can say is be mindful in your relationships, right? Because that is opposite opposite the second house and, you know, sure. I mean, with Mars, you know, and it's Christmas, right? So 23rd December, um, Mars is going into a new place there. And yeah, so look, I mean, it should be good though on the whole. I'm I'm not seeing anything bad. I'm just kind of saying that you will be with people and and with the Mars energy, you might want to take it easy. really take time out to rest and recharge your health very important yeah i mean look that's both with your sun and with mars so it's really a time out for you leo moon um looking after the health and in the workplace you know when it's christmas time and a lot of deadlines and people might be trying to get you to do extra work or things like that just try to hold strong boundaries and say no um you know I think you're going to have to hold some strong boundaries there, Moon, and I think um, you really want to take some time to recharge. It's been a busy year. I mean, look at this. It's virtually December. I mean, wow, we've made it, you know. So um, look back on the year, Leo, Leo Moon, and look at recognize the things that you've done as well. How about that? How about that for some sun and Saturn time? Go back and analyze the year. That'll be really good for you. So... Yeah, and dream big for the year ahead too, Leo Moon. Now we are going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this month I'm just going to have a look at two planets in particular. We're going to have a look at the Sun and Mars. I know there's quite a lot going on with the planets. There's always a lot going on with the planets. Um, But I've decided to just focus in on these two in particular because... <clears throat> because I believe that they're making the most interesting shifts and really to me the action this month is happening it's heavily weighted towards the end of the year so that's where things are going to become a bit more interesting so that's why I wanted to focus my attention here um, on the 16th of December we've got Sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius in your fourth house and I mean this is not the best of uh, transits there could be stress here stress is often associated with this transit Um, things could be a bit tricky on the domestic front Uh, you know perhaps relationship with mum might not be the smoothest um, at this time Uh, and you've also got that with the Mars there as well so we've got 23rd December Mars moves into Pisces in your seventh house so again issues with spouse and or mum so that's definitely happening with both of these so just go slow in all your relationships and on the domestic front at home especially if you're going home for Christmas you're going to be around a lot of people just take time out just you know um, I hear a lot of people they kind of offer to walk the dog and things like that or you know I don't know offer to to do anything that they can to get a bit of time out from if if things are intense family wise so I understand that Um, do what you have to do to get yourself a bit of time out Uh, could be tough times with seniors at work yes with that son there in the fourth house but I've got a note here that with Saturn here that you can use this time to kind of restructure how you think and feel about work and your plans for work your long-term plans for work what do you really want to do what do you long term and these are the kind of shifts that you know are going to take a few months these are the things to just be thinking about and planning a bit more at this time so you might be able to do some good work sort of analytically logically um, using those kind of functions of yourself and in connection with work right so this is a good time 
to do that, to do some thinking and planning around work. Let's have a look at your Mars a bit more. Income may fall, you know, health may provide challenges. And I've got a note here, rest, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you're going to want to rest and recharge. It has been a very long and big and busy year. Um, can you believe it? I mean, the year is just already virtually gone. So really take some time out to acknowledge and appreciate all that you've done and also acknowledge all the good things that you've done. Don't forget to acknowledge the progress, right? So Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, this time I'm going to look at two planets in particular. So um, I know there's always a lot going on astrologically. There's so many things going on in the sky. But for me, the most interesting things was the movement of the sun and the movement of Mars because the Mar sun is shifting uh, 16, se 16 September, my goodness, 16 December. We're at the end of the year here. Um, 16 December, sun joins Saturn in Sagittarius in your third house. And this was quite interesting to me because it's a bit of a, it's a different conjunction happening. And so it's really mid to end of the month. It's interesting. 23rd December, we've got Mars moving into Pisces in your sixth house. So that is pretty interesting too. Oh my God, that's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. So let's have a look at your sun. Oh, Libra moon, you are just flying with these energies. I really hope that you feel this and I really hope that you're able to capitalize on, on, on these two. Uh, so with the sun, you've got a great transit. It's brightening up Saturn. So this is great for your health, great for work. Time to build a business, time to do networking. Really enjoy this energy that's here for you. This is fantastic. And then Mars, hello. We've got Mars moving into the sixth house. This is fantastic. Profits come from business, opportunities, good energy, good health, good vibrant energy. So keep working. Now, you are very lucky, Libra Moon, because all the other signs, I've just basically been telling really rest, <laughs> recharge. For you, I'm actually saying keep working. If there's work opportunities that are coming in, just take them in. Yes, yes, yes. I can do, can do, can do, right? Um, sure, take some time out, you know, be with your family, Christmas and all that and rest and relax. But if you're able to, to take the opportunities and take work and take advantage of this, uh, I, I'm seeing that's fantastic. So if things are coming in for you, then certainly enjoy this energy while it's here. So Libra Moon, I'm excited for you. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, enjoy. Enjoy the busyness if it's busy, right? So that's all good. We're going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I'm only really looking at two planets in particular because they're making the most interesting shifts, I believe, this month. I had a look at the whole month and we're going to notice some things, say, around 16 December. We've got Sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius in your second house. So this is uh, one dynamic for you. And then we've also got 23rd December Mars moves into Pisces in your fifth house. So that's another dynamic there. So let's have a look at these two things. Um, sun joining Saturn, Sun in second, yeah, it, it's, not the, it's not the best of transits. What you want to do here is you really want to keep an eye on your finances. Um, perhaps this might be a time to restructure or rethink some things around your finances. It's going to be on your mind anyway and, you know, there just might be some thinking to do around finances. Um, be careful in your relationships with your family. Uh, you know, we've got Christmas coming up and, and just go easy there. Um, you know, sometimes we just need a little bit of time out, don't we? We need to walk the dog if we're fortunate enough to have a dog. <laughs> then you can get some time out if you need to. So um, look after your health, definitely. Yeah, take time out, rest when you can. I've also got this note about um, headaches and eye-related issues. Sometimes things around the head can be more prominent when the sun is uh, up around there. So really get some time off, screen time off, right? Turn off the screens, turn off the devices, turn me off, you know, turn off the YouTube, 
turn it off do what you have to do um honestly we all need a bit of time off from our devices don't we so that might be one for you there scorpio moon mars is quite interesting for you as well again watch finances yep watch your spending as well yep mars in the 12th spending right so you might spend some money there um this could be a time to improve your diet as well because I was looking at the aspects as well. I mean, diet could be something that you might want to look at. Uh, doing more Ayurvedic style eating, which I know I'm doing. Um, you might also want to keep an eye on your kids' health too, if you have children. And this is really a time to rest, Scorpio Moon. So don't push it, uh, especially when it comes to family. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and watching the finances, that's going to be important for you. So Scorpio Moon, I hope you have a wonderful break and wonderful bit of time out we are now going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now this month I'm really focusing in on two planets in particular uh, we're going to have a look at the movement of the sun and we're going to have a look at the movement of Mars these are making the most interesting shifts uh, I had a look at the whole month and I thought yep these guys are pretty interesting so we'll have a look at what's going on there so on the 16th of December, you've got the sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius in your first house. So here, sun, yeah, this is not the best of transits. Um, you want to be careful of health, anything to do with your health. So really take time out and recharge and rest when you can, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, it's really dark at the moment, and this is kind of hib hibernation time. This is kind of time where if you feel like you're in the afternoon, you have to have a little lie down. Or a little nap do that honestly I was curled up on the couch just not long ago for about half an hour I just needed it so I did it you know there's nothing wrong with that we should do it we should rest when we have to really important Sagittarius moon um, there could be some challenges at work absolutely yep uh, clashes at work and family timeout you might need timeout you might need to if you're gonna be with family over the Christmas period and you have the great fortune of having a dog uh, as part of your family walk the dog offer to walk the dog it's like I think I'll go and walk the dog now that might be something you need to do so do that Sagittarius moon do everything you can to nurture yourself to look after yourself to rest to to really um to really recharge that's really important uh, on the 23rd of December, Mars moves into Pisces in your fourth house. So this is not time to be doing any property dealings. Uh, no property tycooning right now. <laughs> it's not a good idea uh, if you can avoid it. And thank goodness it's the 23rd of December, so I can't imagine that um, there'll be too many places uh, that will be engaged in a huge amount of property dealing. Um be careful about your health. Yes, absolutely. Mother's health as well is noted here, right? So this is another transit where, yeah, mother's health comes into focus. Mars in the fourth there. Uh, the domestic scene, the domestic front, and it does include mum as well. Um, be careful how you speak to family members at this time. So that's one to do. I've made that note for a few people already. Uh, you know, on the... On the, the moon front on these on these little outlooks um, so be careful how you speak to family at this time rest clean up your diet this is also a time to really look at your diet and to really try to clean it up now I realize you might want to clean it up after Christmas that makes sense uh, or you know a new year or whatever it is so that is something to be thinking about because that is going to be something you're going to want to put in place in January so Sagittarius Moon, I am wishing you a very healing and regenerative and restful time ahead so that you'll be able to conserve your energy and build up some energy because the new year is going to usher in some lovely new energies. So you got some things to look forward to, Sagittarius Moon. All right, now we are going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're really going to look at two planets in particular. We're going to have a look at the Sun and Mars. I had a look at the whole month. I had a look at all planets and 
conjunctions and everything and I thought the most interesting stuff is happening here. So we've got Sun on 16 December, Sun joins Saturn in Sagittarius in your 12th house. And this is not one of the better transits, um, but then you've got a very, very good Mars transit. So for you, Capricorn Moon, there's contrast here. So you're really going to have to tune in, read yourself to figure out, okay, do I rest or do I go out? So we'll have a look at this because when it comes to the sun, the advice here is rest. Okay, so you're going to have to look after your physical body. You're going to have to look after sleep. You're going to have to look after diet. This is a real time to go within. So that's going to be important, right? You're also going to want to be careful in relationships um, and how you speak as well in, in your relationships. So, you know, if there's something that you might not want to say, then perhaps don't say it or think about it before you say it. Uh, 23rd December, though, look at this. We've got Mars moving into Pisces in your third house. This is a beautiful transit. So here's where the energy is. We've got a great transit here. We've got business, profits, growth, new clients. We've got opportunities. You know, this could be a time when you start up a little side business. Um, so don't forget, I mean, this is 23rd December and onwards for quite a while. I think it would be a good few weeks. So, you know, I mean, this could be a time where you're planning a new business or a side business or you get a lot of work opportunities. Um, you know, you get a lot of work, you get time to do the work, you get great energy to do the work. You can do lots, you can achieve lots. It's also a terrific time for your confidence and your ability to sell right so there's a lot happening here I mean on the one hand we've got the sun kind of getting you to rest and on the other hand we've got Mars kind of pushing ahead so I'm kind of seeing that you're really going to have to tune in within and at each opportunity really analyze it that okay is do I need to rest do I need to say no to this and do I need to rest or do I say yes to this because it's here and it's some cool opportunity and I could make money and off I go. So you're really going to have to weigh that up Capricorn Moon. But I'm excited for you and uh, you know I, I wish you well. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now I'm just going to quickly check the timing. 23 minutes. It might cut out. Uh, so I'll go really quickly. Oh, I don't want to cheat you, Aquarius Moon, of your time. I won't go quickly. I'll go at the same pace as I've gone for everyone else. Um, if it cuts out, it cuts out, and I'll just pop a new battery in. So what have we got going on, Aquarius Moon? We have got the Sun and Mars. Sun and Mars are the big stories um, this time. Uh, I've looked at all the planets. I've had a look at all the conjunctions, everything, and for me, the most interesting stuff is happening towards the end of the month, and... So it starts really around the 16th of December. We've got Sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius in your 11th house. Now, this is fantastic. This is a really beautiful transit. You could have unexpected gains coming to you, appreciation from the boss. Your financials can improve quite a bit at this time. Great time to travel. Great for health. So, I mean, Sun is giving you beautiful energy. Now, Mars, not so much. 23rd December, we've got Mars moving into Pisces in your second house. So if you're feeling any energy drain or if you're feeling unsettled or things aren't right, it could be to do with your Mars that's moving towards the end of the month. Um, and due to your Mars over the Christmas period, it will be a time to be careful in your relationships. Apologies, Aquarius Moon. I think I was saying that due to your Mars around the 23rd of December, around that Christmas period, it's going to be a time to, I think it got cut at that point, is that right? And what I what I basically want to say is that it's going to be important for you to take time out, to look after your health, to recharge, to relax, to rest, right? This is, this is really, really important, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere where it's really cold and, you know, we need a bit of hibernation time. Sometimes we just need to sleep in the afternoon if you're tired. Just sleep, give your permission, your body permission to just really relax. It's really important that we do that. You know, we have to look after. This is a natural thing. It's not like a laptop that we can just plug in and keep it going. And even laptops get tired. My camera just got tired and <laughs> died. So, you know, uh, even, even mechanical things get tired and, and need recharging and, and to rest. And, and these devices need charging, you know? So uh, we need charging more than anything. So really, Aquarius Moon, 
I'm seeing a bit of a mixed bag for you. I'm seeing some good things there with the sun, but, uh, you know, Mars energy is going to make a, a different shift. So there's going to be some new things after. So look at around 16th, 23rd December. These are the times when there's going to be some shifts happening. They're mild shifts, though, and uh, there's nothing that you can't handle here. So I think it's going to be kind of, Things will be largely the same, but some, some mild shifts. There is, of course, that uh, lovely full moon on the 22nd. So see how you go with that. See if your sleep, how your sleep um, works around that time. Sometimes people do find that their sleep patterns get disturbed by a very full moon. So Aquarius moon, thank you so much for joining. I really hope you get some proper time to chill out and relax. And, you know... Sometimes chilling out is doing stuff that's fun for us. Sometimes it is getting out the canvas and painting or making a piece of jewellery or even doing something on the computer that you love. Maybe you love designing or, you know, so make sure you do things that you love over this holiday period. So Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with all the signs that I've just gone through, um, basically I've had a look at the entire month astrologically and what I'm seeing is that Sun and Mars are the most interesting players this time around. The Sun is going to make an interesting shift 16 December and Mars makes an interesting shift 23rd December. So on the 16th of December we've got the Sun joining Saturn in Sagittarius uh, in your 10th house. And, oh, this is a really good transit for you. This is great. Um, but Mars is not so good. So let's go into both. So the sun is making a really good transit for you. So you could expect some good things due to the sun. I'm so happy for you. This is great. Uh, growth and profits without much effort. Who doesn't like a bit of that? I love a bit of that. <laughs> I'd love more of that. I would love my son to always be going through the 10th house. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um Appreciation from boss, your financials improve, good time to travel, great health. So good energy all round for you to, due to the sun. So that's really, really nice. Where things might be a bit tricky might be to do with Mars. So 23rd December, Mars moves into Pisces in your first house. So this is one to keep a bit of an eye on. So you want to keep an eye firstly on your finances. You might want to curb your spending. So hopefully all your Christmas shopping has been done by this time. Uh, you might also want to keep an eye on your relationships. So you really want your relationships to go smoothly over this time. So perhaps you might want to get a bit of time out from people. Um, you might want to, you know, if you've got the good fortune of having a dog, you can offer to take the dog out for a walk. It's like little things. It's like little things where you can get some time out on your own, that sort of stuff. Um, that might be a good idea. So you want to watch your relationships, watch how you are with your relationships and especially with your mum as well. Uh, just make sure everything's going okay with mum there. Um, you want to keep an eye on your health as well. That's also going to be important. It is, I think, due to Mars, and this is the case for a lot of people, this is the case for a lot of people, the, the big overall emphasis this month that I found by looking at all signs is really health is important at this time. Also in the Northern Hemisphere, it's dark. We've got colder weather. We do need to hibernate a little bit more. So if you're really feeling like I need to sleep, do it. I just had a little lie down on the couch for about 20 minutes, half an hour um, earlier. So do it. Honestly, if you need to have a bit of time out, get your little bit of time out. It doesn't have to be long. You know, you can have a little power nap. You can have a little power walk. Just go out or Go out and get a coffee or a hot chocolate, you know, just do what you need to do in order to give yourself a breather, in order to get a bit of recharge time and in order to be good and kind to yourself and to nurture yourself. It's so important. It's really one of the big things we're here to do. We're here to be ourselves. We're here to get to know ourselves. You know, part of that is self-care and self-love. Is That's really what we're meant to be doing here on planet Earth. So Pisces Moon, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining. And for anyone who happens to have stuck around all this time, 
can't imagine there would be anyone who'd watch all the little bits, but if you have, <laughs> um, because perhaps like me, you have YouTube on and then you're doing a few things. So you're cooking and then you're washing the dishes and then, you know, somehow you end up listening to some random thing. So anyone who is here, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I want to thank you with all my heart. I love doing this work. I love this channel. All the people who come here, you're all just amazing. And <laughs> I know that I feel like with each of you, I feel like we could just go out for a coffee or something and have an amazing time. And it would just be incredible. <coughs> oh, I've got quite a bug in my throat. Maybe I swallowed one of those fruit flies from earlier. If you didn't watch my intro, I've been killing fruit flies throughout this whole video. I apologize deeply to all insects that have been uh, rather sadly sorted out during this video. I'm going to let you go now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.